Hi everyone, it's Sam here. Thank you for watching. So today I'm going to show you how I've made this 3D pillar display box card, something like that, column card. I've got pillar cards or column cards on the channel already and I'll share the playlist up here. They're very similar to the bridge card style, but they have these solid kind of tubes either side. So if those flowers want 3D, you can see if I push it to one side, it would fold flat. So if you haven't seen that style card before and you want something that's going to fold flat, check out the playlist that's popping up there. But I've got these beautiful dies that I want to start using on cards and I just wanted different ways to display them. So that's why I'm calling it the display card. So this will fit into my five by seven box envelope. You can also do this in a six by six size. If you've made these cards before, it's dead easy. And the acetate is completely optional. You can have anything displayed in here. It doesn't even have to be flowers. And if you don't have flower dies, you can cut your flowers. You could use stamps. It's just really showing you how to make this card. And like I said, display anything you want in there. I think it would look lovely. So it's dead easy to make. So let me show you how. So this is the Apple Blossom Peony die set that I've used, but there's also loads more. I've got these ones, which I'm going to work my way through and do some other really nice cards using them. But I've got the Rose, Daffodil, that's going to be lovely. Poinsettia, Dahlia and the Hydrangea. They are for flower forming, so you use your flower forming foam, but they work perfectly with paper and stuff. So and I'm going to show you how to put one together in a minute. So peony for today's card i've just used an old crafter's companion basket weave for a little bit of texture in the background and then my sentiment is from my verses my floral verses set and i've just got the birthday wishes just for you i hope your day is beautiful too and it's that one there with this frame and then i've just taken this die here because i wanted a little bit of uh silver added in just yeah you'll see that in a minute and a marker for coloring in the stamen detail so I've already done these ones here, so I'll show you how to do those in a moment. So you want three pieces of five by seven. One you're gonna keep like this. The other two, along the five inch side, you wanna score at one, two, three, and four. And you're gonna make this tube here. So just fold and burnish all of the score lines and just fold one over the other, it doesn't matter which one. And I'm gonna use my construction glue to stick this one down. So just all the way down one side there. And then if you just lay two of the sides down and then you'll be able to fold the other one over and just give that another burnish. just give that a minute to dry so whilst that's drying I'll just go through the mats and layers so for the inside I've got a piece of two and three quarters by six and three quarters and that's the one I've embossed and then I've also got for the sides two pieces of three quarters of an inch by six and three quarters and then two pieces of half an inch by six and a half and I've embossed those as well so it all matches and that's just going to be layered on top of those there then the acetate I've brought this in smaller, so I've done four and a half by six and a half because I don't want you to see the edges of it at all. I've just put some thin tape on the sides there. OK, so the pillar card is quick and easy to make. That's why I thought I would show you just how to do one of the flowers. I do have a really nice tutorial showing you how to use the flower forming foam and paper to make really nice 3D flowers. But it's on my Mater Surprise channel, so I'll link it up here and you can check that one out. So I've used the festive berries to just ink in fact I think yeah it was that one just the edges you're just kissing the sides there like so you want to do that with however many you need I use the rustic wilderness to color the leaves there which I've cut and then I've just used the rusty hinge to colour these pieces and I've cut five of those to go in the middle of one flower and I've cut four of these for one flower. If you do a bigger one then I've got four of these as the small ones there and then I've done three or four larger ones but to get this size which is what I want because I want two of those then it's just the four. And I've just got this old bit of mat here I've just put some fun foam on the edges because Originally, it was just these two pieces, but it's just an old mat that I just cut in half and pick them up from the, you know, cheap pound stores, things like that. I'm going to flip this over and I'm just going to spritz it with a little water. 
just give that a few seconds to absorb. And I've just got some tools here. These are actually used for making flowers for cakes. So with your icing and things, it's exactly the same technique, really. So on the side here where it's now really damp, I'm going to flip it over. I'm going to use the largest ball there and just pull it in to the centre. And it's just going to start breaking down all the fibres, but also starting to curl the edges there of the flower. I just go around a few times. You can see now it just lifts itself nicely. So you do that on all of them, but this is still quite soft because it's damp, whereas this is really hard now. So I'm just going to give it a blast with my heat gum. And as you're drying it, just keep it in that shape there. But now that's solid again and it's going to stay in that shape. I've then got my hot glue here. I'm just going to pop a little bit there and I'm going to use my mat again. Take one of these, just kind of just offset the petals a little. And then using this, I'm going to use a smaller end and really push down on that glue. And the petals will start to lift and kind of come in on themselves. This is to create this peony flower because this is how these ones are. So every flower is going to be a little bit different. And then again, I'm just going to pop another one in. So it's just kind of overlapping a bit. And you just want to really roll them in on themselves. But I like using the hot glue because it dries all around all the kind of cracks and stuff that you've formed. And then it just means the flower is going to stay that way. Now you could put this one underneath, but I'm going to pop it in again on the top and really push that down and keep bringing all of that in. You can see we've got that effect there. In the die set, there are also loose petals here and you can add more inside. You can stick them on the outside. So if you do want to really get it more like a bud so it's not quite opened, then you can do that as well. I've then got these ones here. And all I did with these ones was just take the smaller tool here and just roll it in from the outside in. And you'll see the petals just roll inside. OK, and then we're going to do the same again. So a little bit of hot glue and then I'm going to stick it inside. And as you stick it in there, I want to get... A stylus there and it will start to really kind of bring all of those petals around so it looks like a bud if you find it easier to just put the glue on the bottom of this and then just open it up a little bit and then stick that inside but use something to just squeeze and push that glue down if you're using the foam the flower foam the flower will look you know quite realistic if you get your colors right and your inking right you literally can make some you know from a distance sometimes you would never know that that was a you know that it wasn't real so like i said i've got that in that tutorial so have a little look anybody new you might not have even seen the flower foam so that's the last one there and then i've just taken some stamens here i've just got a little drawer full of them here it's best to get the white ones because then you can color them any color you want so i've used just a brown alcohol marker here and i've just colored the ends there now i don't need them to be that long so i'm just going to trim off the white this is completely optional you don't need to add this at all but i just thought it just makes it a little bit more detailed so i've cut them quite short there and then I'm just going to pop a little bead of glue just to kind of hold them all together. And then I'm going to use my tweezers like so. And then I'm just going to stick that right in the middle there. OK, so just got three little stamens there. You can see how they look in that one and in that one there as well. And now I'm just going to add some glue to this one and then pop that in the middle there and then what I did is got some more of that original pinky color and just on the back side just brush it over the edges there of the petals 
You could do it on that one as well, but you don't really see it too much. Like I said, if you want it really tight, then just, you know, when it's make it, I would put more water and twist the bottoms so you're really breaking up the cardstock. But I'm pretty pleased with that one. Okay, so you should now have two of your pillars. I'm going to make sure you want the open kind of end here facing in on both pieces. I'm going to take this piece here and add my glue along the bottom there. And then I'm just going to sit that right up to the edge there. And then again with that side. I'm just using my bone folder. You could pop a ruler in there just to get in and make sure that glue is spread out. So your card should now stand up. Then I'm going to take my embossed piece and that's going to go inside there. So that's just drying. I've just sprayed the back of the leaves because I forgot I hadn't done those. And then I'm just turning them over so it's nice and damp. And then again, I'm going to use, maybe I'll go for this end and just roll up the leaves there from the end. The cardstock I've used is about 220. If you go too thick, it can be quite hard to shape them. And obviously too thin, you run the risk then of ripping them. And then before I set them in shape with the heat tool, I'm just going to spray some of the Perfect Pearls Mist. This is Biscotti, it's very old. But you can see there, it just gives you a really nice effect. Okay, so now everything's dry, so I can start to position where I want these to go. So, so I'm going to have the acetate is going to cover over the top, so those are going to have to just be hidden underneath. My sentiment is going to be stuck to the acetate down here. So I'm thinking quite nice to maybe have... No, that looks too, maybe like that. Yeah, I think I'm going to stick, get this one stuck in place. I'm just going to add the glue on the back there and get that down. Because once that's in place, I can start to squash stuff. And I've got all those leaves to build in. Just want to make sure that nothing comes above your one inch side there. But I want to give that space. Yeah, I think that's going to work. So I think we'll get all these down first. And now I can start to add more of the leaves to start to fill up some of that white space. Okay, so I really like that. And then I'm just going to add these little silver, I guess, little sprigs. Okay, so I really like that. Then if you've got any glue strings, I can't see any, but you may find them once you pop the acetate down. Just use your heat tool, warm it up and just blast it just over and it will be enough to just melt them away like so. So like I said, the acetate is completely optional. If you do use it, make sure you give it a good clean. I always rub some or spray some rubbing alcohol or surgical spirit, which is also known as over the top. So I've made this shorter because I don't want you to see any of the edges. So it comes down slightly shorter. If you want to make it the full seven inches high, you can. And I've just had to peel that side off. You need need to make sure your sides are nice and straight because obviously this one isn't folding flat there we go that's better you're still not going to see that so just make sure that you've got it nice and uh, I guess square even though it's a rectangle you know what I mean these need to be nice and square at the ends and then I'm just going to take the tape off of both sides there and then what I'm going to do is add tape to the back of my mat pieces here
Okay, and then I'm just going to use my construction glue and stick these ones down. So that's how it's looking so far. And now I've just got my sentiment and I'm going to use my pokey tool here just so I can make sure I get that nice and straight. And this kind of then starts to turn it into like a bridge fold card. I think that's straight. There you have it. How pretty does that look? And that's why I've called it like the display card because it does display anything you put in there. I think it looks really special. And then on the back, you just want to cut yourself your standard mats and layers for a five by seven card. So a piece of four and three quarters by six and three quarters, and then four and a half by six and a half. And that's just going to add some strength then to the back. And that will fit perfectly into my five by seven envelope boxes. But if you don't want to have the 3D element, you just want it all flat. And you'll see if I pushed it off slightly, you can see how that will eventually go flat if you wanted to. But mine is to stay in its 3D form. I'm just going to push that that way a little bit. There we go. That's better. It's just touching, but I think it still looks great. So I hope you've enjoyed my twist on the pillar cards. I think it's a really nice effect and just a different way to use that card style. Check out the links in the description box below, which will have all of the product that I've used today. And popping up now will be some other pillar column style cards that you might want to watch next. And those ones do fold flat if you want to see that style, if you've not seen it before. Also, if you've enjoyed today, give me a thumbs up and consider subscribing if you haven't. And that way you won't miss out on any future tutorials that I share. Take care and I'll see you all again soon. Bye.